What's up everyone, Big Dan here, and in this video, we're going to explore some of the worst decisions you can make in Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3. If you haven't seen my video on Acts 1 and 2, then check out the link in the description. Number 1. Let Astarian Ascend For several centuries, Astarian has been subjugated by his master, the ancient vampire Kazador Zar. It was always Kazador's plan to sacrifice Astarian and the rest of his vampire spawn in a ritual to allow him to ascend and become a more powerful vampire. With our help, Astarian can break the chains that binded him for so long, but somewhere along the way, Astarian gets the idea to perform the ritual himself and become a full-blown vampire lord. The only problem is that he needs to sacrifice all the other spawn in order to complete the ritual. Astarian basically goes completely unhinged in this questline, and letting him complete the ritual is one of the worst choices you can make for his character. Now, I can hear it at last. See it at last. How oh, all the lowly creatures of this plane are begging to serve. How to call upon them. Scurrying footpads in their safe houses. Rats below our feet in their filthy holes. The crows in the night above! They will obey. The world will stir. The main benefit from a gameplay standpoint is Astarian gets an upgraded vampire bite, which is really good, but I don't think this is enough to justify Astarian going completely over to the dark side. Number 2. Sleep with Mazora Now depending on how you look at this, getting it on with Mazora can either be seen as one of the worst things you can do or one of the best decisions you'll ever make. In Act 3, Mazora may join your camp as part of Will's companion quest, and if you speak with her, you can unlock the option to have an intimate evening with the depraved Cambion. Smile, and I'll come to you when you put your head down to rest. I will sate your most forbidden lusts. Tonight, then. Be ready. The scene plays out with Mazora allowing you to dabble in the most depraved pleasures in all the hells. The only catch is that your ecstasy comes at the expense of torturing countless souls to fuel your depraved evening. The funniest part about this whole encounter is Will's reaction. I just can't get over how disappointed he is. <laughs> Why? Why not? Last I checked, you were the only one of us tied to a leash. I think I'll nip out for a bit. Stretch my wings. And don't be too hard on him, pup. Don't you remember? I'm irresistible. Countless souls walk these planes. Countless ways to find pleasure. And out of all of them, you chose her. Do you understand what she did? What you did? God, you caused so much sorrow, all for a damnable fling. For every pleasure you took, a damned soul suffered in the hells. You fed on the hopeless, the frightened, souls so desperate they sold themselves to a devil, souls like mine. Number three, Betray Shadowheart. Assuming Shadowheart strayed from the path of Shar at the end of Act 2, she'll enter the House of Grief once you reach Baldur's Gate to confront the Mother Superior and free her parents. In this scenario, you'll have to fight through Viconia's goon squad to reach the Inner Sanctum. However, if you're looking to avoid a fight, you can betray Shadowheart and turn her over to Viconia instead. You there! Surrender this one to me now. And you can consider Lady Shah's forces your allies in the battles to come. What? No! You keep such shrewd companions, Shadowheart. A shame you didn't learn from them. Seize her. Wow. 
Quite something. To have devotees of the Shah herself sworn to our cause. A pity Shadowheart was the price of it. But the Lady of Loss will take her dues. Our loss is our gain, so to speak. This is obviously a bad ending, not only from the standpoint of right versus wrong, but from a gameplay perspective too. Clerics are a really powerful class in Baldur's Gate 3, but hey, I guess you can always build one as a hireling to replace old Genevel. Number 4. Sacrifice Volo the resident bard of your camp will leave early in Act 3 to take to the streets of Baldur's Gate. Unfortunately, he runs afoul of some absolute cultists who tie him to the train tracks and plan to set him on fire. At this point, you can intervene to save Volo's life. Or, if you're feeling really depraved, you can let the cultists burn him alive. The choice is yours. Help me, goddammit! Help me! This promises to be an amusing spectacle. Let us see if death can silence Volo at last. No! No! Please, no! I take it back! Dear citizens, justice awaits! Number 5. Sell Will's soul and then don't save Duke Ravenguard. After witnessing Gortash's coronation as Archduke, Mazora will inform us that Will's father has been whisked away to a secret prison where he will most certainly meet an untimely end. In order to save Duke Ravenguard, Mazora presents Will with a choice. Let his father die, or resell his own soul to her in order to save his pops. You damned wretch. Do it then. Claim my soul for Zariel. Keep my father safe. Fiat Ita. Hilariously, and most unfortunately for Will, you're under no obligation to save his father after the contract has been signed. This essentially makes Will's sacrifice worthless and condemns him to an eternal life of servitude to that absolute baddie, Mazora. But you wouldn't do that, would you? Number 6. Betray Nightsong Assuming Shadowheart didn't run a spear through her heart at the end of Act 2, Dame Aelin, aka Nightsong, will join your camp for the remainder of the game. However, Catherick Thorm was not the only one who wanted to suck the life out of Nightsong. The wizard Leroican of Sorceress Sundries also had a contract to retrieve and utilize the ASMR to grant himself immortality. Upon discovering Leroican's plans, Nightsong goes to confront the wizard in his tower. This will lead to a fairly difficult fight against a series of magical summons and the great wizard himself. However, you also have the option to betray Nightsong and turn her over to Leroican instead. I had hoped to appeal to your better nature. Perhaps I overestimated you. Hmm. No bother. I have an arsenal of implements capable of convincing you to see reason. And you shall have it. This, I promise you. Traitor! I will bring this tower to the ground before I'll hear another word! This will be the last time you betray my majesty. Today I will end your life. End it for once and for all! <laughs> ah, Aelum. I look forward to getting to know you for the next eternity. Mamadons! Imperatum! Number 7. Kill to impress the Ball Council. Locating Orin to obtain her Netherstone can be an arduous journey. She's hidden away somewhere beneath the city, and not even Gortash knows where to find her. 
Your only lead is a ballless plot to kill a bunch of random people throughout the city. So in order to find Oren's location, you'll need to investigate the murders. Or if you're feeling particularly evil, you can kill some of the targets yourself as a means to gain access to the ballist hideout and learn the whereabouts of Oren's sanctuary. This path of depravity is particularly fun if you're playing as the Dark Urge, since that origin story ties directly into the lore of Ball and has a bunch of unique choices and dialogue you can experience. Number eight, Kill Minsk. Minsk, the lovable dim-witted ranger, is an iconic character from the original games and the final potential companion in Baldur's Gate 3. Unfortunately for us, he's currently working for the Cult of the Absolute, so this quest involves tracking him down and eliminating all his goons. If we strike Minsk down with non-lethal attacks, we'll have the opportunity to recruit him to our team, much to the dismay of the Emperor, who doesn't trust Minsk's unpredictable nature. However, even after jumping through all these hoops, we can still decide to kill Minsk, or even have Jahira herself do the deed. The results are just depressing. Killed her. He won't stay down for long. Tell your Elithi to protect him from the Elder Brain's influence. Quickly! No. This one will not aid our cause. Get rid of him. The Mind Flare pours poison in your ear, I think. Tell it I will tear the prism from your grasp and throw it into the deepest lava pit I can find. Long after our bones are dust and ash, the walls of its prison will still be burning. Now help my friend! She bluffs. Surely she would not risk the fate of all for one simple. So be it. At least let me be the one to strike the final blow. No. I have seen friends die before. But to do the deed myself... I know you did everything you could. More than I had any right to expect. And I have no doubt that you are more than a match for this cult. But I think perhaps that I have gone as far as I am able. I will take Minsk back to his home in Rashomon. And after that... Well... I think this city is finished with me. I am certainly finished with it. If you kill Minsk, Jahira will abandon your party as well, making it a two-for-one of bad outcomes. I personally found this quest to be a bit of a pain in the ass, as it's very easy to accidentally kill Minsk with lingering status effects, even if you switch to non-lethal damage. I definitely had to reload saves a few times to get him on my team. Number 9. Let Orin Sacrifice a Victim Early in Act 3, Orin will kidnap someone from your camp to force your hand and try to get you to kill Gortash. This scenario can vary quite a bit. In one playthrough, she kidnapped Lazel from my camp, in the second one, she kidnapped the orphan girl, Yenna. You can either acquiesce to this demand or mount a rescue mission to save your companion. When you reach the Temple of Ball, Orin will be poised to strike down her hostage. You can prevent this from happening with a skill check, or you could just tell her to kill them. Did it think it could protect? Did it think it could save? Only the blades can offer salvation. Number 10, Sacrificing the Gondians. Gortash's Steel Watch are formidable opponents and can make his boss fight much more difficult than it already is. What with all the flying bombs that can one-shot you? So fortunately, there is a quest where you can destroy the Steel Watch before your final confrontation with Gortash. The day-to-day -day work of building the watch is carried out by the Gondians, who are essentially being held hostage along with their families. The Gondians won't agree to help you unless you free their families. But you can always just kill the guy with the codes, use Speak with Dead to get the codes, and then make the factory self-destruct. However, doing this costs all the Gondians their lives. But hey, sometimes sacrifices have to be made. As the lock clicks open, the alarm triggers, and the screaming Warning. System failure. Warning. <laughs> so
So there you have it. 10 more cursed decisions in Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3. I'm consistently impressed with the range of choices in this game and the ability to just go full-blown evil. I'll be showcasing my typical worst playthrough ever, where I play as a bold, dark urge drow hellbent on destruction. So keep an eye out for that video in the very near future. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more BG3 and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.